Good afternoon, friends. Steve Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, boy, there's I have spent tons of hours working on this situ this project of Ezekiel 40 going uh, all the way. Well, actually, I've only gone up to, I think, chapter 45, the temple. Uh, the As many people believe, it is a future temple uh, that's going to be restored. It's one of the main reasons for Israel... Uh, for them to be getting their dominance, global dominance, and uh, or the reason behind it, I should say. And I'm not quite done with this as of yet, so I'm I really don't want to to get into this fully with you guys, and then yet not have this um, well complete completely put together in a way that uh, really would benefit everyone. Um, in fact, there was a video that I had pulled up a few days ago. And they were talking, using Ezekiel's uh, temple there for, like I said, for Israel to dominate the entire globe. And so I want to get all that put together for you. So I want to share a little bit of this information with you. But I want, I want to kind of give you an idea, though, where we're headed to on this. So you kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at on here. Uh, in the visions, God brought he, uh, he me into the land of Israel and set me down upon a very high mountain where where on was that were the frame of the city of the south, right? Um, he goes on to say, He brought me thither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass with a line of flax in his hand, a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. Kind of reminds you of the book of Revelation, right? And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with your eyes, and hear with your ears, and set uh, your heart upon all that I shall show unto you. For the intent that I might show them unto you are you brought here. Declare all that you see to the house of Israel. And behold, a wall outside the house round about, the man's hand measuring reed, six cubits that go into all these measurements, etc. And many people, myself included, have always wondered about this being a future third temple in what we would consider to be the modern state of Israel. But there's just some very interesting peculiarities that make me question whether or not this is something that has, uh, that the fulfillment of is actually more so 2,000 years ago. And, uh, and, and it might even answer why the argument is there for, for example, um, so many people saying, how could we have a sacrificial system restored in light of the fact that Jesus Christ was the ultimate sacrifice? He gave his life for us. And so I can certainly see that being a plausible argument. And, uh, and so I decided to look at this. And, uh, and of course, the first thing that comes to my attention, too, is Ezekiel being told to declare this to the house of Israel. Uh, and you can't help but wonder because everybody considers the 10 tribes being lost tribes that when Jesus was here is only the house of Judah. But we've proven that over and over and over with the book of Acts that the house of Israel was indeed in the moderns or was in the time of Jesus was actually there. Acts chapter 2, for example, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Uh, there's other places too. I think in the book of Hebrews, if I'm not, yeah, in the book of Hebrews. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind, write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Wait a minute. So the house of Israel then actually was in the or in the times of Jesus already there. The law had already gone forth from Israel. So all this was being fulfilled 2,000 years ago. 
I mean, it's very evident. We're, we're looking here at the book of Hebrews and the house of Israel is there. We get the book of Acts, the house of Israel is there. Jesus even goes on to say, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. That was to the house of Israel. If you look over in Matthew, uh, that was in Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 15. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Wow. So perhaps scriptures that we have thought would be fulfilled in a modern time of a modern future temple coming and that the lost tribes would return has already been fulfilled. And so I find it fascinating then when I read these scriptures in here. And here we have again, we're in Ezekiel, um, this particular one here, Ezekiel chapter 43. Now let them put away their harlotry and the carcasses of their kings from, far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure accurately. How did God then dwell in the midst of them? That's pretty obvious. When Jesus Christ came and he poured out his spirit after he was crucified, rose from the dead, the Holy Spirit was pulled, poured out. What is he is now dwelling in the midst of them? Ezekiel chapter, what is this, chapter 45, I believe it is. Um. Let's see here. I'm not sure. Yeah, Ezekiel chapter. Yeah, it's Ezekiel chapter 45. Thus saith the Lord God, let it suffice you, O princes of Israel. Remove violence and spoil and execute justice and righteousness. Take away your exact exact exactations from my people, said the Lord. You shall have just balances and a just ephop and a just bath. You remember where Jesus dealt with those very issues when he was here? And he was condemning the Pharisees, for not using righteous judgment. Um, I don't know if I actually brought one up on that or not. Let me just see here. <laughs> that was another good one right there, though. And they made a calf in those days, offered sacrifice to the idol, rejoiced the works of their own hand. God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. As it is written in the book of Prophets, O you house of Israel, have you offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Uh, different issue altogether. Let me just see if there were some other things that I wanted to share with you guys. This is the book of he We already did the book of Hebrews. We, of course, we went into Romans just recently going into all this. Um, and, you know, and another thing, too, I was looking at is uh, some of these Dead Sea Scrolls. And this particular one here. Because this is often used, the Valley of Dry Bones, as a time when, when uh, it would be a future time. Uh, speaking of the house of Israel, Son of Man prophesy over the bones and say, May a bone connect with its bone and a joint with its joint. And so it happened. And, and he said a second time, Prophesy, and the sinews will grow on them, and they will be covered with skin. All over. And it happened. And again he said, prophesy over the four winds of the sky, and the winds of the sky will blow upon them, and they will live. And a large crowd of men will rise and bless uh, Yahweh Sabaoth, who caused them to live. And I said, oh Yahweh, when will these things happen? And Yahweh said to me, when a tree will bend over and straighten up. Jesus Christ was the tree of life. And when he gave up his life on the olive tree, the cross that he was hanging on, cursed is he that hangs on a tree, right? When he gave up his life, that tree had bent over. And when he stood upright again, it was the resurrection. And there you have it right there in the Hebraic language for you as well. 
و این و یه کف ایتس و یه زکف when that tree will stand erect up when the tree of life though it has died has resurrected you know it's amazing to me some of these things that are in there because this is often like I said often cited for that another one that I thought was interesting too um this one here, as it is written in the book of Ezekiel, the prophet, talking about Ezekiel 25, 8, the house of Israel and Judah is like all the peoples. The interpretation of the word concerns the last days when again against them will rally a just people, but the wicked, the demented, and the simpleton, the men who serve God, who have circumcised the foreskin of their heart in the last generation. And of course, they're again bringing the prophecies that Ezekiel is talking about to be fulfilled in a time when they're foreskins of the heart would be circumcised, which clearly is during the time that Jesus was here on the earth. So I'm just, like I said, I'm blown away by these things. And uh, that's the UFO that we did a little video on not too long ago. Uh, there's one more I want to share with you. And this is a little different. This is actually from the Apocrypha of Moses written in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And this one makes me wonder, too, about 2,000 years ago. It says, And I will remove the human beings, and I will abandon the country into the hand of the angels of enmity, the priests of Jerusalem, to serve other gods. Yeah. And, and it does say that. I read it in Hebrew as well. And the angels of enmity. You remember where it says in Genesis, and I actually have this up because it's going to be part of what I wanted to speak about on this one here. Remember where it's prophesied, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Now, that's actually, that that is a prophecy, even in this, this pseudo-Moses is what they call it, I will remove the human beings and I will abandon the country into the hand of the angels of enmity. The priest of Jerusalem to serve other gods. Now, here it is right there. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. When Christ was here, there was enmity. There was a hatred that was put between the woman and her seed, which is Christ Jesus, and that of the serpent. And if you notice, too, Jesus in Matthew 23, right? Remember that? Matthew 23. What did he call them? He called them a bunch of serpents and vipers, right? I just, I bring that up because why? Why do I say that? Um... Let's see. You serpent. There it is right there. Matthew 30, 23, 33, 33. You know, you serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Now, he's saying that about the Pharisees and Sadducees. What does it say in Genesis I'll put enmity or hatred between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. Well, the seed of the serpent then had showed up, according to Matthew 23, verse 33, in the Pharisees, and there was hatred between Christ Jesus, who is the woman's seed, and the serpent's seed was clearly... Let me just pull this out uh, here. Let's go through Matthew 23. We see a little bit better here. I don't want to do it in such a small little print there for you to make it harder. Um, and, and I'm just, I'm telling you, friends, this is this is fascinating to me. Um, there you go right there. Jesus called them serpents and vipers. Literally, in the one of the Hebrew forms, they're called a genealogy of serpents. A genealogy means that they are the seed of the serpent. You can, I don't care if you apply that spiritual, it doesn't matter to me how you want to do that. The point being is, 
in the Dead Sea Scrolls, we are going to have the human, the, the, and I will remove the human beings, and I will abandon the country into the hand of angels of enmity. So those that would end up being in power in Israel would not be human, but they would be hybrid. They would be angels of enmity, the priest of Jerusalem to serve other gods. And that's exactly what they were doing. So, you know, there's so much that was fulfilled during the times of Christ. It's not even funny. Not even. I mean, this is like unbelievable. So I really want to go, uh, uh, you know, like I guess I've been studying this and I really want to take and do this a greater justice. So rather than going into it completely tonight, uh, I am going to continue to put this together so that it will be a real blessing for you. Uh, so please just be patient with me. Also, another thing too, uh, Mike from around the world on Paul Bagley's program, I think uh, Elizabeth uh was telling me that he mentioned about 17 uh, asteroids. And I think on our Patreon channel, I mentioned that to you, but it's actually 18, not 17. Uh, I was getting into that because of the fact that, um, if I remember right, in the meetings that I was in on that, is that they were using the dark matter weapons. Uh, or that's what they want to use. They want to use dark matter weapons to try to destroy them. They already tried nukes and it did not work. So uh, I actually want to go in and examine some of the things that he was saying to uh, saying on Paul's program there and share that with you guys here. Probably end up doing that though over on Patreon though. We loaded about five or six videos here about a week ago. Uh, and this week I'll be loading quite a few more again. So if you're not subscribed to us there on Patreon, you might want to definitely uh, join in there uh, this coming week. Uh, and, I, and if you don't want to join quite yet, just no problem. I'll let you know once we start uh, loading more. There's still some information I've not loaded yet from last week. Uh, but, uh, but I'll definitely update you as more of this information. We begin to put it on there. I want to thank you, though, for listening. And thank you for your support of the ministry here that we do. Uh, and I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Danoon Institute of Biblical Research.